So let's transform our background of this clip using generative fill, rotoscoping, and motion tracking. Let's dive into it. So I'm gonna change an industrial background and I'm gonna make it look like she's sitting on top of a mountain. So to do this, first, I'm gonna start out in After Effects. I'm gonna hit Option W. I'm roughly gonna rotoscope my subject and the rock she's sitting on. Selecting my subject using the green brush and holding Option to remove parts using the red brush. So once I have a rough roto, I'll hit Option W again and in selecting my edges I wanna soften. I'll also select my hand edges and her shoulder as well. I'll change my alpha overlay to make sure it's good enough. So this is a super basic rotoscope that I just did. If you wanna learn more about rotoscoping and dive a little bit deeper, then check out some of my other videos linked below. So I'll jump back to my effect controls and I'll adjust my feather a little bit. Now to maintain my subject's hair flyaways in the wind. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create a mask around the top part of her body, making sure not to select any of the industrial background. I'll change my mask to add, and I'll export this frame to Photoshop beta. So I'll jump to composition, save frame as, Photoshop layers. Now I'll jump over to Photoshop beta. I'll use my magic wand tools to select my alpha, and I'll expand my selection so it overlaps my subject a few pixels. I'll hit Generative Fill, and I'll type in Mountain Top. Okay, a few great options. I'm gonna go with option four. So what I'm doing here is I'm using the surrounding area around her body and I'm blending in the rest of the footage. So the rotoscope was super helpful, but I'll only need the bottom part of the rotoscope layer because the way her body moves should just stay in the vicinity of that mask. Now I'll click my gen fill layer and I'll convert to smart object, select my alpha part with my selection tool and I'll expand it 20 pixels so it overlaps the background, invert selection and I'll click generative fill and hit enter. So you're probably wondering what I'm doing now, is now I'm basically creating a clean plate so there's no alpha that sneaks into my image after I composite it. So now basically I could take my footage of my girl and put it right over this and then I could work from there. So I'm gonna save this and I'm gonna jump back into After Effects. So I'll drag my PSD into my comp under my roto layer. And if I skim my timeline, I can see there's some camera movement that I need to motion track. So I'll duplicate my roto layer and I'll remove the roto effect on this layer. So I'll just use this to track the background. It's more of a guide layer. I'll rename my layers so I can keep track. And in my clean plate layer, I'll go to animation, track in Boris FX Mocha. And I'll click on the Mocha icon here to jump to Mocha. Now I'm in Mocha and I'll click on the X spline tool. I'll select a few points that have the most contrast and have the most detail inside of it. Now I'll click on Show Surface, and you can see the blue square here. I'll click on Align Surface, and the square will maintain the composition parameters. Now I'll click the Track Forward button, and I'll fast forward for your viewing pleasure. And I'll hit Save. Now jumping back to After Effects, I'll drop down the Tracking Data dropdown, and I'll click Create Track Data. Then Layer Export to my background layer, and apply export. And you'll see since the background layer is exactly my comp specs with no breathing room, some edges will peek in. Now I could either adjust my Photoshop layer size or in this case, I could just scale it up in AE since it's a clean plate. So now it's looking good. So let's just add some moving clouds to it and add some more motion and depth to the shot. So I have a stock clip here of a cloud. I just want to color correct and blend it in a bit. Give it a screen blending mode. And I'll adjust the scale and position here. I'll move it behind my subject. And I'll adjust the opacity. 
And now I could duplicate this and create some more clouds on the other side. I can flip it vertically so it looks a little bit different, a little different variation. And now I just have to go back to my Mocha AE effect and create the track data for these clouds. So I'll apply that same tracking data to one of my cloud layers. And I'll copy this corner pin effect to each of my clouds. So now I could have pre-comped these into one composition, but I want to actually create a bit of parallax with these clouds by making them 3D layers and adjusting the Z position of them. And lastly, I'll make my subject layer a 3D layer. All right, so that's how it's done. Obviously, there's tons of different possibilities to use generative fill. This is just one of them. If you wanna check out some of my other videos on using generative fill for video, check out the links below. Hope this video helped your videos in the future. See you next time.